Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, we are going to discuss about deep beam reinforcement details. In the previous series of this videos, we had already discussed about the deep beam design specifications that is the part 1 of this video series and then we had also discussed about the positive reinforcement details of deep beam that is the part 2 of this video series. I will be giving you the link in the description box. You can check that part 1 and part 2 of this video series so that you will get a clear idea about deep beam and its specifications. As per IS 456-2000 and SP-34, we have many criterias about the deep beam reinforcement details. So in this video, let's discuss in detail about the negative reinforcement of the deep beam as per codes and standards. So without further delay, let's begin now. In deep beams, we have positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement and vertical reinforcement. Since we had already discussed about the positive reinforcement in part 2 of this video series, now we are going to discuss about the negative reinforcement and vertical reinforcement. In IS 456-2000, class number 29.3.2 represents the negative reinforcement of deep beam. In that, it is given as termination of reinforcement. For tensile reinforcement required to resist negative bending moment over a support of a deep beam, it shall be permissible to terminate not more than half of the reinforcement. This we have to understand carefully. So the termination needs to be not more than half of the reinforcement and the distance of the termination is 0.5D from the face of the support where D is defined in 29.2. So when you provide negative reinforcement, it shall be permissible to terminate not more than half of the reinforcement at a distance of 0.5D from the face of the support and the remainder shall extend over the full span. So let me explain you clearly with the diagram. Before getting into the explanation, let's look into the bending moment diagram for the continuous beam. So it will be something like this. So you provide the negative reinforcement over here and positive reinforcement over here. So this is your sagging moment and this is your hogging moment. So in this negative reinforcement, how you have to arrange the reinforcement that is given in this class. Here D is the overall depth. So in deep beam, D is not the effective depth. Here we have to consider the overall depth because in the reinforcement termination, we need to consider the distance as 0.5 D. D represents the overall depth of the deep beam. Now let's look into the reinforcement details of deep beam. When the L by D ratio is equal to 2.5, you have to provide the curtailment like this. So as we have discussed before, as per the class given in IS 456-2000, half of the reinforcement needs to be curtailed at a distance of 0.5D from the face of the support. As you look into this, this is the face of the support. So from the face of the support at a distance of 0.5D, the bar needs to be curtailed. That means half of the bar needs to be curtailed and the remaining bar needs to be extended over the full span as you can see. So in the required AST, half of the reinforcement needs to be provided throughout the full span and half of the reinforcement needs to be curtailed and the curtailment distance is 0.5D from the face of the support. I hope this is clear for you now. Next, let's look into the distribution. That means how we can distribute the reinforcement in the negative zone. When the ratio of clear span to the overall depth is in the range of 1 to 2.5. So this you have to understand the range clear span to overall depth range needs to be 1 to 2.5. Then we have to divide the negative reinforcement into two zones. In that first case is a zone of depth 0.2D adjacent to the tension phase which shall contain a proportion of the tension steel given by this formula 0.5 times L upon D minus 0.5. That means from the top of the tension, this is the top of the tension phase. From here 0.2 D is the distance we need to consider for this area of steel. So AST multiplied by this formula. Here L is the clear span and D is the overall depth. So measuring 0.3 D on either side of the mid depth of the beam which shall contain the remainder of tension steel evenly distributed. As we have seen before the formula was given as 0.5 times L upon D minus 0.5 times AST that needs to be provided from the top face of the tension zone till the distance of 0.2D and then we need to divide 
point 3d on either side of the mid depth of the beam this we need to consider point 3d and then we have to evenly distribute the remainder of the tension steel for span to depth ratio less than unique the steel shall be evenly distributed over a depth of point 8d measured from the tension phase that means from this phase up to a distance of point 8d we have to evenly distribute the area of the steel let's discuss with the example so this we already know the curtailment distance is 0.5d half of the reinforcement needs to be curtailed and half of the reinforcement needs to be extended over the full span of the beam when the l by d ratio is equal to 2.5 and the reinforcement needs to be provided at a distance of 0.2d from the top of the tension phase and then in zone 2 we have to take from the mid depth of the beam 0.3d on either side and then we need to distribute the evenly distribute the reinforcement the remainder of the reinforcement so if you consider this 3 it is 0.2 plus 0.3 plus 0.3 it will become totally 0.8 if the l by d ratio is less than unity then you have to distribute the negative reinforcement evenly over a depth of 0.8d let's discuss with an example so here let's consider this one as zone 1 zone 1 is up to 0.2d this is the distance from the tension phase it is 0.2d and then this will be your zone 2 the remainder of the reinforcement we have to provide in the zone 2 so for zone 1 from the tension phase up to here up till here 0.2d half of the reinforcement needs to be curtailed and the remaining half of the reinforcement needs to be provided throughout the entire span so that area we have to calculate by using this formula that is ast1 this is the ast1 0.5 times l upon d minus 0.5 into ast so here we have the ast as 2400 mm square so let me calculate this here we have the clear span as 6000 mm and the overall depth as 3000 mm so ast1 is 1800 mm square if we calculate using this formula ast is 2400 we get 1800 mm square so this 1800 mm squared we need to provide in this area that is 2d 0.2d is 0.2 times d is 3000 0.2 multiplied by 3000 so up to 600 mm we have to provide this 1800 mm squared area of steel so among among this 1800 mm squared half of it is 900 right so 900 mm squared needs to be curtailed like this at a distance of 0.5d from the face of the support and the remaining 900 mm squared needs to be provided throughout the span okay so this is the first case next in zone 2 what we have to do is we need to divide this one into 0.3d and 0.3d from the mid depth okay so this calculation is AST minus AST1 because the remainder of the AST has to be provided in this zone 2. So that is 1400 minus 1800. Sorry, uh, that is 2400 minus 1800. So we get 600 mm square. So this 600 mm square area of steel needs to be provided in this zone 2 at a distance of 0.3 times 3000. 0.3 into 3000 that is 900 900 and here also it is 900 so in this depth we have to provide this area of steel i hope it is clear now next so in this way we have to distribute the negative reinforcement from the top of the tension phase next let's look into the codal provision sp34 so in this it is given as clear span upon overall depth ratio is equal to 2.5 in this case we have to provide as1 as equal to as and then as2 is nil in this case no need to provide as2 in this case if the l by d ratio is equal equal to 2.5 so as we know here point 2d is the zone 1 and point 60 is zone 2 so this we have to divide into two part point 3 and point 3 from the mid depth of the beam next one is clear span upon overall depth is equal to 1.5 so if this is the case we need to provide as1 as 0.5 times as and as2 is 0.5 as1 next if the clear span upon overall depth is less than 1 then we have to provide only area of steel 
there is no such divisions required so overall this point 8d we have to evenly distribute to the reinforcement next let's look into the vertical reinforcement if forces are applied to a deep beam in such way that hanging action is required bars or suspension stirrups shall be provided to carry all the forces concerned and if you look into the side phase reinforcement it, it shall be comply with the requirements of minimum reinforcement of wall so for that we need to refer the class 32.4 that's all about the negative reinforcement of deep beam so friends i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box your comments are always welcome and if you want any particular topic please do let me know in the comment box and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos thank you for watching